Hello everyone and welcome to episode 95 of the 24 hour modeling challenge on Elizabeth. No, it's the 10 minute modeling challenge, but we did a 24 hour live stream this Saturday just gone by and I've just about recovered now. I hope you guys have too. It was a lot of fun, a lot of uh, fun chatting going on there and I modeled random stuff for Asteroid City, a lot of the stuff that you came up with. So had a great time. So huge thanks for liking and subscribing to my videos and just for hanging out in general, you guys rock. <laughs> And also a big thanks to my moderators. I couldn't have done that live stream without you. So a uh, big thumbs up and thank you very much. A couple of you or three, four, I don't know, <laughs> stay the entire stream. So you must have been absolutely tired listening to me going on for that long. So again, thank you very much. And uh, now we're gonna do a little quicker video just to uh, recover from that 24 hour modeling challenge. And we're coming close to uh, pumpkin times again. It's uh, Halloween coming up. so. Last year I did a little uh, pumpkin and I was going to revisit the topic, why not? So uh, this is episode 95, let's make ourselves an, a pumpkin, but this time we'll do it in EV with some uh, some new uh, features maybe. So we'll see how that goes. All right, pumpkin 2.0, here we go, in ready, steady, go, and we're off. Yes, tap into edit mode, it's select everything. We're going to make an orange pumpkin, no surprise. So control, uh, no, let's go to control five and then let's apply this, uh, let, let's do a lot of stuff here. A to select everything, or tab into edit mode, A, scale it up a bit, maybe like this, scale, Z, squash it, scale, shift, Z, there we go. Now I'm gonna go into the dreaded sculpting tool. I hate this thing, I can't sculpt for five kroner, whatever that means. But I have to do some uh, textures here, because usually I would have done this in like proportional editing, but I guess I really have to do this rivet. Sounds like a frog. Yeah thing using uh, sculpting. It'd be a crime not to do that. So that should do. And maybe I'll just raise a little bit at the top. Maybe that's too much. And then go back into the safe space, UV editing. <laughs> that feels a bit better. And then I'm gonna just gonna grab four faces here. Shift D to duplicate those. And then my favorite tool here, circle. Scale, bring it down a bit. And E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude. Are these? These are um, gray or green, I think I did last time. There we go. That's not green, but never mind. Now we're gonna go to the front view. Ooh, that's weird. G. Okay, got some issue there. Oh, I can't have that organic thing looking organic. So there we go. Now I'm gonna cut uh, this thing. So tab into edit mode, edge select, and we're gonna use, um, I think we're gonna use the knife tool. So K. And I used a different method last time, I think, but I'm going to try to do evil eyes now. And I, I can't really do evil stuff, can I? So, but let's try to get a shape here. Am I clock running? Yeah, 813. And then try to connect that one. Did I miss it? I think so. There we go. F3. And then we can select inner region there. That's quite handy. Delete faces. And then here, let's do the same. K knife tool. And now I have to do like a similar eye here. And again, Let's try to get an evil look, if I can. So let's knife this thing. Let's knife this pumpkin. No wonder, no wonder it's angry at me. And there. F3, select inner, delete faces. It's not great, but hey, it's, uh, it's gonna be looking scary. So the wonkier it is, the better. K again, let's go for like the evil grin here now. I'll just do some weird shapes here. Angry teeth. So let's get a big grin going. Is this gonna work? Let's see if I can connect this thing together. Come on! I can do it. There we go. Connect. F3, select inner, delete faces and then let's do a nose as well okay that can't be difficult can it and i spend more time on the nose than anything else <laughs> there we go connect f3 select inner delete faces that's it and let's do a solidifier on this now a lot of let's all the time here so let's just let's just add a solidifier solidify and a little thicker maybe outwards there we go that's it and then i'm going to change this to rendered and let's stick uh light in here so i'll do shift a okay i won't do that because that expands everything here i need to do shift a light let's do a point light g 
and we have to beef up the they're so weak by let's go 5,000 or should I go over 9,000 maybe that's way, way too strong 50,000 is too strong 5,000 and let's do a bit of an orange there as well so that's it um let's move the camera I'm done nearly oh, what's the time 554 let's just call it a day or a night I'm gonna move the camera to here let's enable the ground again and then move the pumpkin and the light up and since we're at this then maybe we could just do I'll go into rendered mode here straight away and it's a little bit brutal here because we need to change some rendering settings here I just spent some extra time the pumpkin is done so I just uh, set a world record in my own time here not world record pumpkin but for me I finished a 10 minute session in five minutes so that's pretty good so let's go uh, let's 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 <laughs> I keep saying let's all the time I'm gonna bump up the viewport so we can get a little bit better on the shadows there and let's try some new stuff let's add uh, indirect lighting shift a go for a light probe this is in EV now so I'm gonna do a light volume here scale shift Z, and then spin. and now we should be able to bake this straight away because Eevee doesn't do like Blender, where it actually lights up the surrounding. That's what's so nice about Blender, with cycles, I mean. So here I'm going to go into indirect lighting and bake this thing instead. There we go. Then we got even in Eevee some indirect lighting, so it reflects a little bit there. Pretty good. Okay, what more should we do? We should uh, maybe add fog. Yeah, let's add fog. So in that case, let's go shift A. Oh, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Let's see, shift cube no scale it up scale this one up let's make a volume out of this one i should rename it volume <laughs> there we go and let's go inside of it and uh, then i have to create a new shader here so new and let's get rid of this thing we'll call this uh, volume volume shift a and let's do a uh, volume principled volume there we go and let's go into volume with that one. Z so we can see it. Shade. Okay, rendered. Here we go. And it's way too dense. So let's go down with the density. Okay, there we go. And it's still uh, way too dense, I think. So let's go down to... The... Maybe we'll add noise in this thing instead. Let's go add, add noise texture. And 4D, so we can animate it a little bit over time. Color. Oh, we'll do a color ramp as well. Color ramp. How am I doing? 3 minutes 18. Color ramp. Color into... Fac. F-A-C. Factor. And let's bring that into density. And here we go. We can up that one. Oh, yeah. oh we have to multiply it a bit. It's too strong. Uh, or I guess I could make this grayer. There we go. And scale it. Maybe 20. I don't know. Some distortion. Should we make it uh, blue instead? Okay. Maybe. Okay, and this one we need to shade differently. So I'll have to uh, go face. And then shade smooth. That's a bit better. And the fog, I guess, it's too weak still. We can go a little bit brighter. There we go. It's too blue. My fog is too blue. Too, too orange. Should we go green? No. That's a bit Halloween-y. We can up the... For the render, I'll up the quality as well of it, so it looks a bit better. Uh... I can scale that one. So there we go. Are we happy with that? I think I want it blue again. There we go. And a bit stronger here. I can't make up my mind, can I? Uh, let's add some turbulence. Or like um, distortion to it. Ah. I've lost the plot now a little bit, I think. I liked it better before. Detail. 
distortion down. Oh, never mind. Let's go brighter. Yeah, by the way, by, by the way, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just learning this as we go. So don't see this as a tutorial. This is my little learning session here <laughs> that we've got going. So uh, maybe we'll do. Let's try baking that by lighting again, just to make sure. And we'll do a cube map size. Maybe we can bring that up. Mm, or we should be all right with that one. But let's do volumetrics. Uh, this one for rendering, I'll bump that one. We'll do volumetric shadows, maybe. And how am I doing? 33 seconds. I think that's it. Got ourselves a little there. Doesn't look that pretty, but let's up the quality a little bit of the render. Maybe a stronger light. No. There we go. I just sat there and waited. That was quick, everyone. Don't know what happened then. Should we just do some final tweaks maybe and see if we can salvage a little bit of what was going on here? I'm not too happy with the shadow. It's a bit too dark and stuff. So we've had some lights in the scene before. We can maybe enable those. Alright guys, it's great to learn while you're doing a video. That's why these are not tutorials, because I haven't really done this before. So pardon uh, that it took a little bit of time. What I ended up doing, uh, I didn't just run through it now. I had to fast forward a little bit so you didn't have to sit through my tedious uh, testing, but I can show you what I've done for the end result anyway. So in the shading tab, let's save this one first of all. Uh, if I select this volume out here, it's uh, just a giant cube. And I've created a volume shader for this one, and it's a principled volume. And I plugged a noise texture and I chose 4D because uh, 4D, the fourth dimension there is time. So I animated this over the keyframes. If you can see that the W value here, which is the time value, animates over time between zero and one. And that way it'll uh, animate like the turbulence, sort of fake turbulence inside this noise texture. And then I plugged this color. I also had to spend a lot of time figuring out what scale and detail and, and distortion to use to get the look that I wanted. And then I plugged this into a color ramp so I could control the blotchiness a little bit here. So I decided to go for a little bit more darker regions. If I save this, you can actually see if I pull this one, the dark slider here, if I can hit it, uh, then it becomes more uh, empty empty room inside the shade there. So you can control this with the color ramp now how, how strong you want the fog effect to be. Uh, you can also change this uh, distortion thing here if you want it to be a lot, a lot more streaky and things. So you can play around with those settings quite a bit. Then I multiplied this uh, color ramp by 0 0.5. First I have uh, had add, that was uh, why it didn't really have any effect when I was changing these values because I was supposed to multiply it. And then I plugged this into the density and then I set it to like a cyan type of color here. So that's my volume shader. And what else have I done? I've created a couple of lights here. I decided to stick a light behind the pumpkin because I thought that looked a little bit cool to see, see it from behind there. 
and I also have a point light inside of it to light up the inside. This thing here that I've created is uh, in irradiance volume, I think it's called, is <laughs> how you say it. And that's so you can fake the indirect lighting here in uh, Blender or with the EV renderer. So when this one is selected, if I go to the properties, uh, you can change a few properties on it. I haven't actually touched any of those, apart from just making sure that I scaled it up so these points here are uh, covering the scene where I'm going to be looking at this thing. And I also had to go in here to the rendering tab, uh, render properties, and under uh, I've enabled volumetric lighting and volumetric shadows. And then here is where I click the bake indirect lighting. That's where it actually takes the light source and it calculates at all these pro points so you can actually illuminate this one. If I delete the rendering cache here, uh, it's not that much of a difference now because I decided to stick this light at the back here. If this one was disabled, let's see, if I only have this one, and let's go tab out of edit mode on this one, you can see if I do bake in direct lighting now that it gets uh, light outside here. So, but since I enabled this uh, backlight again, it didn't really have that much of an uh, effect in the end. And uh, other than that, uh, changed a few settings just to bump up the quality of the, the tile size here for the volumetrics to 2 and uh, animated the camera. So if I look in the animation tab here, we're actually going to fly from without this, uh, outside this principled volume there. Uh, and then uh, it'll just fly in and uh, we're just going to zoom in. And I also changed this to a linear animation. So if I select the camera here, uh, you can mark these key points here in the graph editor or in the auction editor. Right click and action edit. Auction editor. <laughs> going once, going twice. And here, interpolation mode, I set to linear. So the animation, that's also important when I animated the keyframe in the shader here for the principal volume. I hit I on the keyboard here. Oh, that wasn't necessary. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh, so I actually started to play that. So you hit I on the keyboard and uh, that inserts a keyframe. So I had to enable the graph editor here as well, so I could uh, change those so it's linear as well. So that's it. I'm going to render this thing now and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, I have no idea if this looks any good or yet. I've got so much left to learn here. That's why uh, this is a lot of fun. I'd like to learn EV a little bit more just because it's so fast to render. So I'm hoping to find some good shortcuts so we can get this stuff uh, rendered nice and quickly with a decent effect. Some shortcuts there. All right, that's gonna be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Very different from my normal stuff, possibly. And uh, well, we'll see what happens next week when it's episode 96. Until then, uh, have a good one. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you haven't. And I'll see you then. Bye for now.